welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the A-hole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first. Am I the A-hole story? This says, am I the A-hole for making my boyfriend wear a tie to a black tie event? Nope, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, in the description and personally my motto is i would always rather be a little overdressed a little overdressed than a little underdressed that's or any amount of underdress that's embarrassing let's get to the story my boyfriend and i attended my co-worker slash friend's wedding last weekend where dress code was black tie i let him know a couple weeks in advance and he expressed annoyance saying i never wear ties i hate wearing ties and I told him I was very honored to be invited to this wedding as she is someone I care for and respect and I would be embarrassed if he broke the dress code. Fast forward to the wedding, he wears the tie to the ceremony and is angry the entire time. Doesn't speak to me and has a terrible look on his face. I cried after the ceremony because I was upset he was acting this way. He said, you care about this wedding that you care more about this wedding than you do my feelings. Can I just fucking stop here, please? Let's rewind it. I never wear ties, I hate ties. Oh really? Do you think we love bras? Do you think a bra is any more fucking comfortable than a goddamn tie that you get to take off in a couple hours before you even make it home? Don't give me that shit. Get a fucking grip, okay? Next. You're gonna sit there with a fucking sour look on your face at someone else's happiest day? Just get the fuck out. Just leave. Just stand outside. If you're gonna be a dick, then don't come. If you're gonna be a dick, then leave. And the fact that you wouldn't talk to your girlfriend the entire time because she made me wear a tie. Literally, that's the attitude my five-year-old has that I'm working on breaking him of because it's bratty and inappropriate. But back to the story. We talked it out and had a good time at the reception. However, I feel like this week he is still sour about it. It's been a week today and I teased him about how the pictures would have turned out better if he had been in dress code. Apparently that was unacceptable because now he is just as upset as he was at the wedding. I genuinely can't wrap my head around how he can be this upset about a tie. Am I the a-hole? Um, no. Listen, if he is going to pitch a tiny little baby hissy fit over this tie, what kind of fight is he going to have over money, over kids, over where you guys are going to buy your house, over freaking car insurance? I mean, like the shit that actually matters. Get out now while you still can. Trust Heather. Edit, thank you all for your responses. For context, we have been together for almost three years, 30 female, 34 male. And this was an isolated event. He really is a good person, very kind, generous, always goes out of his way to make sure I'm happy and taken care of, which is why I was so taken aback by the whole situation. I wanted to come here to gain some perspective regarding this particular incident. Thank you all for giving me a little peace of mind. Um, a little peace of mind, ma'am, you're going to tell me in three years he's never acted like this sort of, of an entitled childish brat. This was the first indication of this. I really highly doubt it. You're going to tell me that you never uh put mayo instead of mustard on his turkey sandwich and he pitched a little fucking baby girl fit. Yeah, I fucking doubt that. Let's see what the goddamn comments say. It's a bow tie, not a body disfiguring surgery. Is he always this childish? Not the a-hole. Edit. Replace necktie with bow tie. OP responds, he's not. He is such a reason a responsible, respectful person, which is why I took to here to ask because it's very out of character for him. I thought I could be the problem. Thank you for your response. If this is legit and this is the first time he's ever pitched a fit, which I find so very difficult to believe because this was so easy for him to do. If that is really the case, then I think... You need to ask him what the deeper reason here is because it's obviously not the tie that's the real problem because 
That is the silliest thing I've ever heard. Nick says he's clearly not always a responsible and respectful person. This childish behavior is a big red flag about maturity. Enough so that I would definitely be reconsidering the entire relationship. At a minimum, be on the lookout for other red flags so you can bail before it gets bad. This says, am I the equal for disowning my sister for dating my assaulter? And I already feel like the flames are a brewing. There is a trigger warning for SA. I'm hoping that it's just a quick recap and we get into the real story. Yo, he's so fake because he just does these sounds as soon as I start talking. We were just quiet in this room for like five full minutes. Anyway, if something like this would trigger you, please feel free to skip to the next story. For all of you who are staying, let's get right into it. I don't want to get into details, but I was essayed by a man I've known since I was a kid. We grew up as neighbors and would play together all the time. He's 35 and I'm 32 and my sister is 29. My sister is the first person I went to after the assault. She held me while I bawled my eyes out. A few weeks ago, I saw them waiting in line holding hands at Starbucks. I was going to get me a cake pop. They didn't notice me, so I quickly turned around and walked back out. I went home and was in a full-blown panic attack. I was hyperventilating and I couldn't see through the tears. Later in the day, I called my sister and asked her why she was holding hands with my R-wordist. She tried gaslighting me, but eventually she admitted to it. She told me they had been together for a few months. I asked her why, and she said that she and him had talked about it, and he told her that he never assaulted me, and that I must have lied because I came on to him, and he shot me down. She had the audacity to ask me if I was jealous. I was fuming, so I hung up on her. So was she not there the day that she held you as you cried after the assault? And now she believes this fucking dickhole? Our parents don't know that he assaulted me, but my sister told them that I haven't been talking to her because I'm jealous that she is with him and he turned me down in the past. I'm so sick of these bitch ass fucking two faced sisters. You're supposed to be there for your family, not your fucking clitoris. Like that is not what matters here, ma'am. I don't want to tell them because they are really good friends with his parents and I don't want to ruin their friendship, but you need to. Actually, you didn't ruin it. His disgusting, assaulting ass ruined it. You're not ruining anything. You're just telling the fucking truth behind all his smoke and mirrors. I'm gonna get out the, the blood pressure. I'm gonna need it, I just know it. But my parents are calling me immature and petty and then it's breaking their heart that I would disown my sister over something so trivial. 107, it's just gonna go up from here. I feel like I'm the a-hole because I can't bring myself to tell my parents the truth, so maybe I'm being the a-hole to myself more than anything. I can fucking agree with that for sure. Any advice would be appreciated. Okay, let's stop before the edit and just calm down a tiny little bit. You are probably, you're not young anymore. You were young when it happened. Listen, the thing is you need to be honest. These cretins do cretinous things because they lurk in the shadows and underneath rocks and in the back of dirty alleyways and they do these fucked up things and somehow their victims turn into the bad guys. Absolutely not, not on my watch, not on my goddamn channel. You go ahead and tell your parents and then maybe write a letter to his fucking parents, letting them know in great goddamn detail what he fucking did to you. And then smack your fucking bitch sister. Metaphorically. And just go no contact with that hoe. She needs to fucking realize what a disgusting, nasty, sloppy bitch she is being. Let's get to the edits. 
I'm overwhelmed by how many replies I have received, but I know what I have to do now. I will be telling my parents. I'm going to write out my thoughts and read it to them. Thank you all for encouragement. I'm nervous of how it will go. Again, thank you all. Girl, lift up that chin, stiffen up that spine. Say with your full chest, you got this. <laughs> I say you're not the a-hole, but let's see what Reddit has to say. Please tell your parents. Parents would want to know. You're their child. It sickens me that you are keeping this a secret and that your abuser is gaslighting your sister. It's a dumble dagger. Fight like there's no tomorrow. You can do it. Next is the OP and she says, I just got to find the courage to speak out. I haven't found it yet. I'm worried about her, but I feel utterly betrayed and angry at the same time. Next says why she isn't worried about you. And last says this right here. She knew and chose to believe him. What happens to her from here is sadly her own doing. And let's hope he doesn't do to her what he did to you. Although... Based on her stupidity of dating a R-wordist, I don't know if you can say that on YouTube, I'll look it up. I mean, I, I would never say someone like that would deserve it, but I mean, and it's hard to say, oh, she had it coming, but in an instance like this, girl, what I'm gonna say is you're playing with fire. We're gonna check the blood pressure one more time, see if I need to contact my primary care physician for a new prescription of blood pressure medications based on MIV whole stories. We're at 119. I definitely need to calm down. Let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for expecting my roommate to buy me the food they ate? I hate roommates. I hate when they eat the, your food, which is funny because now that I own my own house, like anyone comes here and they're like, oh, can I have it on my girl? Get into the pantry, go like sneak around like a little mouse, pick and choose what you want to eat. Like, go ahead. If you finish something, just let me know and I'll order more. Like get it, get, get it, get it. But I'm also not a broke ass college student with like two boxes of Velveeta in the pantry and nothing else. So let's get to the story. Some background, my Apartment has a weird way of doing food. We each take turns buying groceries for everyone and then all share in the food. Sometimes people will buy things for themselves, but in order for it to qualify, said food needs to be bought outside of their usually go usual grocery run. I bought myself some chicken fries to eat as a quick and easy meal, but when I went to eat them, I found that they were all gone. I asked both my roommates if they had eaten any and one said they did. I asked them to buy some more to make up for this and they got really angry and defensive saying that me asking them to do this was going too far. I was insulting them by calling them untrustworthy and blaming them for making an honest mistake. Talk about repressed emotions, roommates. Calm the fuck down. No one said nothing about trust or any of that other fancy ass shit you had to say. Calmate. In reference to our apartment's weird way of doing food, we have been out of chicken fries for a while. Usually the grocery runs were once every three to four weeks, meaning that one person would only buy groceries once every three months-ish as there are three people living together. Then I went and picked up some more for myself. So a new magical bag of chicken fries would have just appeared in in thin air after having none for a while. I thought this was enough to indicate that someone bought it outside of the usual grocery run, AKA that it wasn't on the table for everyone. This is something I've noticed happening with zebra cakes and other food and I've never parked it in because of this. Anyway, eventually I grabbed, I agreed to label any food I bought for myself so it would be clear it wasn't for everyone. He still ate that too, apparently still not noticing it was mine. But I never brought that up because I didn't want to cause an argument. So am I the a-hole for expecting him to buy me new chicken fries after he ate mine? You're the a-hole for not walking into his room and fucking munching on his pillow. Like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me right now? You even put your goddamn name on it and this motherfucker ate them anyway and, but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to cause an argument which is why he's taking advantage of you because he knows you have no spine and you won't say anything to him so he's going to continue to bully you and eat your food because it's an easy option for a bully 
Man, please stiffen out the spine. Stand up for yourself. This is not a, am I the a-hole? This is a, you took my shit. I called you on it. We agreed that I would label my shit so you wouldn't eat it. And then you fucking ate it again. So now you, sir, are the unequivocal asshole of the situation. Can I get an amen? And I'm gonna check my blood pressure again because y'all, this this day, this this block of stories is really putting me through it. I say not the a-hole. Let's see what Reddit has to say. And I'm at 113. I guess I've calmed down a little bit. That's good, but that needs to calm down quite a bit more. <laughs> this says, grow a spine and stop being afraid of arguments. I didn't write that comment, but I could have. Next says, that's legit. I guess OP wrote a comment, but then deleted it. That's legitimate OP, but you are going to need to live the rest of your life advocating for yourself. And sometimes that may include arguments. I would strongly suggest you seek out therapy or support groups to help you address your trauma because not arguing ever is not a viable strategy for adult life. I 100% agree. You're gonna need to grow up, grow a spine, thicken it up a bit, straighten it out some, and stand up for yourself. I mean, it's just the way the world works. You know, there's a bully on the playground. Eventually, you have to stand up to him. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 350 MIV whole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!